Eleanor Powell's life, though filled with remarkable achievements and undeniable talents, was not devoid of tragedy. Behind the dazzling smile and electrifying performances, she experienced personal struggles that cast a shadow over her success. Eleanor Powell was born on November 21, 1912, in Springfield, Massachusetts. Her parents divorced when she was a baby, and Eleanor was told by her mother that her father had died. It was not until she was 23 that he reintroduced himself to her. As a child, Eleanor possessed a timid nature, prompting her mother to devise a plan to help her break out of her shell. She decided to enroll Eleanor in a dancing school, hoping it would coax her out of her introverted tendencies. Surprisingly, her dancing lessons primarily focused on ballet rather than tap dancing. At the age of 12, Eleanor stumbled upon an opportunity that would change her life forever. During a visit to her relatives in Atlantic City, fate intervened when Gus Edwards, a renowned producer of children's shows, caught sight of her dancing on the sandy shores. This fortuitous encounter paved the way for Eleanor's remarkable stage debut in the enchanting Vaudeville Kitty Review. Still in the throes of her twelfth year, Eleanor found herself landing her first professional gig at the prestigious Ambassador Hotel in Atlantic City. She continued her dance career in the vibrant clubs of Atlantic City, captivating audiences with her talent. At the tender age of 16, she ventured into the world of a revue at New York's illustrious Ritz Grill, setting the stage for her sensational Broadway debut in 1928 with The Optimists. Unfortunately, the show's run was short-lived, propelling the young dancer to audition for further opportunities on the grand Broadway stage. During each audition, Eleanor faced a recurring question about her tap dancing skills, it dawned on her that to truly thrive in the industry, she needed to acquire the art of tap dancing. In pursuit of her enhancing her tap dancing skills, Eleanor embarked on a brief but transformative journey at the Jack Donahue Dance School in New York. To keep her feet grounded, she had to wear surplus army belts adorned with sandbags, a unique technique that shaped her distinctive tap dancing style. This experience proved so influential that she eventually assumed the role of Donahue's dance assistant, sharing her knowledge and passion for tap. Returning to the dazzling world of Broadway, Eleanor found herself featured in a string of riveting revues, dedicating herself to refining and perfecting her technique. In January 1929, she mesmerized audiences with follow-through, showcasing her rhythmic prowess while tapping to the widely acclaimed tune, Button Up Your Overcoat. This stellar performance catapulted her into the ranks of bona fide Broadway stars. In 1931, she graced the Broadway stage alongside Anita Page and Fanny Bryce in the captivating production of Crazy Quilt. Eleanor's talent also earned her a spot at the illustrious Carnegie Hall, where she captivated audiences with her tap dancing alongside Paul Whiteman's orchestra. Additionally, in 1932, she dazzled in the Florence Siegfeld production of Hot Cha. With Eleanor's undeniable success and exceptional talent, it was only a matter of time before Hollywood came knocking on her door. In 1935, she made her silver screen debut in the enchanting motion picture George White's Sandals of 1935. This marked the beginning of her enduring partnership with MGM, propelling her into the realm of major movie stardom. Throughout the 1930s, she continued to grace the silver screen in a series of highly successful films, including Born to Dance in 1936, Rosalie in the following year, Broadway Melody of 1938 and 1937, and Honolulu in 1939. Solidifying her status among the elite dancers of the silver screen, Eleanor achieved a milestone in 1940 with the Broadway Melody of 1940. In this iconic film, she shared the dance floor with the legendary Fred Astaire, effortlessly matching his every step with grace, poise, and artistry, particularly in the mesmerizing finale, Begin the Beguine. Her talent shone brightly alongside Astaire's unparalleled skill. The following year, under the direction of Busby Berkeley, 
Eleanor showcased her extraordinary abilities in Lady Be Good. In a stunning sequence, she danced a captivating number, fascinating rhythm, adorned in a top hat and tails. Throughout the 1940s, Eleanor continued to produce exceptional work, leaving a lasting impression on the silver screen. In 1942, she graced the film Ship Ahoy with her presence followed by Thousand's Cheer in 1943. However, after these accomplishments, she bid farewell to MGM and embarked on a new chapter of her life by marrying the talented Canadian-born leading man Glenn Ford in the same year. She shifted her focus to raising their son, Peter Ford, who would later carve his path as an actor. Eleanor's on-screen appearances became scarce as she ventured into motherhood. She briefly returns to the movie screen in the late 1940s, making two short documentaries where she appeared as herself, showcasing her true essence. Additionally, she made a memorable cameo in Duchess of Idaho, starring Esther Williams, where she performed a boogie-woogie style number, once again portraying her authentic self. Following a period of seclusion, Eleanor made a triumphant return to the public eye in May 1952. She graced the screen as a guest star on an episode of Four Star Review alongside renowned performers Danny Thomas and June Havoc. Simultaneously, Eleanor pursued a spiritual path and was ordained as a minister of the Unity Church. This allowed her to devote her time and energy to charitable organizations and religious endeavors. Notably, she hosted a Sunday morning television program titled The Faith of Our Children for two years from 1953 to 1955. This impactful show, aimed at young viewers, received recognition with an Emmy Award. Sadly, Eleanor's marriage to Glenn Ford came to an end in 1959. The divorce was far from amicable, with Eleanor making allegations of cruelty against her former husband. However, she refused to let personal hardships define her future. Encouraged by her son, Powell embarked on a transformative journey, shedding pounds to regain her dancing weight. With unwavering determination, she began rehearsing for a captivating nightclub review. In February 1961, Eleanor's hard work and dedication culminated in a resplendent opening at the Sahara Club in Las Vegas. With her triumphant return to the spotlight, Eleanor Powell's show became an instant success leading her to perform at the renowned Latin Quarter in Manhattan. The New York Times declared Eleanor Powell has Broadway at her feet once again, acknowledging her undeniable talent and captivating performances. Throughout the 1960s, she continued to leave her mark, making notable guest appearances on television shows such as The Ed Sullivan Show and The Hollywood Palace. In 1981, her remarkable contributions to the world of film musicals were recognized with the prestigious Ellie Award. Tragically, Eleanor Powell's life was cut short by cancer, and she passed away on February 11, 1982, at the age of 69. As a respected church minister, her remains were lovingly interred in a bronze replica of the Bible, finding their eternal resting place at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Hollywood. Farewell and rest in peace to the iconic dancer and actress Eleanor Powell. Her extraordinary talent, unmatched grace, and unforgettable contributions will forever be etched in the annals of entertainment history.